Никогда не думала, что такое может быть. Я никогда не думала, что это действительно случится в этой жизни. Я только молюсь, Боже, что им надо, что им России мало. Мы потеряли нашу жизнь. It has now been a hundred days since Russia invaded Ukraine. Thousands have been killed. Villages, towns and large parts of cities have been left in ruins. And the lives of 44 million Ukrainians have been changed forever. Among them is Oleg Rubak. A week into the invasion, this 32-year-old engineer was in his house playing with his one-year-old daughter when a missile struck, killing his wife. The second bomb was dropping down near five meters of our house. You, you see, in this moment, it is not home, not room. It is, maybe, maybe it is hell. Like many strategic Ukrainian cities, Zhitomir was hit by sudden and deadly attacks. Home to a military garrison, the city is 150 kilometers from the Ukrainian capital. In the early days of the war, Kyiv itself was in danger of falling to a Russian military convoy stretching more than 60 kilometers long. Faced with this threat, Ukrainian soldiers destroyed bridges leading into the city to stall the Russian tanks. Western officials believe Moscow to be targeting Kyiv in an effort to decapitate the government and install their own means of governance. Citizens search desperately for ways to flee. our grandpa grandfather our grandmother and our flat with every every style that we, we had we just have a little little bag and our dog among those who stayed behind some found refuge in the city's metro An ideal shelter, since many in Kyiv live in high-rise buildings that are highly vulnerable to attacks. As many women and children fled the country, men aged between 18 and 60 were banned from leaving Ukraine and called on to fight. This former professional tennis player was on holiday when the war began. He returned in order to take up arms. I cannot say that I feel comfortable around a rifle. I'm not sure how I'm going to react to shooting at somebody. Uh, and this is something, and let's say, even if I will uh, be capable of shooting, killing someone is marking you on your life. So I don't believe that any of the Ukrainians are willingly doing it, but we don't have any choice. The west of the country has been spared the worst of the conflict. But Lviv, a city just a few hours from the Polish border, has nevertheless become a base for civilian resistance. No one knows what will be tomorrow. And I want to be ready. Uh, to be ready, go to, to the war. Львів же якось звикся з, з такою ситуацією і всім готовий допомагати. Люди всім серцем відкриті до допомоги, не шкодують ні, ні сил, ні часу, ні грошей на допомогу іншим. In a secret location, this group builds deadly drones for the front line. Змогу пілоту літати там на 3, 5, 10 км і бачити ціль і знешкоджувати цю ціль і також знаходитися в безпечній віст на безпечній відстані. Ну, в принципі, це спасає життя. It's real and it's possible and it doesn't cost like huge money. It costs like, you know, modern iPhone 
costs more than this equipment. In the east of the country, the reality has been very different. Kharkiv, situated some 40 kilometers from the Russian border, has been heavily attacked over the course of the war. These Ukrainian soldiers are part of the main brigade in charge of the city's defense. Uh, it's uh, this is our motivation from our children, from school, uh, from uh, our family, and this our flag. We hear only the sound. Дивлячись, що працює. Якщо працює міномет, то це секунд 30, а якщо працює танк, це одна дві секунди. The men are only a few kilometers from Russian troops on what is known as point zero, the last position before the enemy. Конечно, все боятся. Я считаю, только глупые люди не боятся. Что боитесь? Просто с этим страхом сделать ничего нельзя, надо с ним жить и делать свою работу. For the few residents that have remained during the height of battle in the city's Saltivka neighborhood, daily life has been punctuated by loud booms. Ну, we are different families here. But now we are a big family. Kharkiv and Mariupol have endured long weeks of deadly bombardment. Mariupol in the country's southeast is a key city. Controlling it allows Russia to link occupied Crimea with territories in the Donbass region. Under siege and battered almost daily since the beginning of the war, few journalists have been able to enter. Thousands, trapped there for weeks, described the horror they lived. In late March, Russia begins to abandon positions in other parts of the country to concentrate its war machine on the east. As forces retreat from the Kyiv region, the devastation becomes clear. Bodies litter the streets. In just one stretch of road in Bucha, 20 people are found dead. <laughs> Це просто мирні жителі, які йшли ось 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 картошку ніс. І снайпери лупаші, ви ж самі бачите, в голову, всіх в голову. От скуки. Only days after, the Ukrainian president visits the town accusing Russia of genocide. Russia in turn accuses Ukraine of staging the scene. The dead are among hundreds of others killed in the town. Оці довгі братські могилі поховано 57 чоловік. І тут 20, десь тіл 40. Back in the east, Ukrainians prepare for the full-scale assault on the Donbass. As Russian forces close in, those who can't or won't leave stay behind. Да, і що я що дозволю, щоб ці твари прийшли сюди і гвалтували моїх жінок, моїх дітей, мою землю, поплюжили ніколи в житті. Да. Єдине, що я хочу, якщо я відправлюсь туди, то я з собою хоча б чоловік п'ять повинен взяти росіян. Та все, пане. Все, так. Це буде іга, це буде гнет. Іга. Ми не хочемо. Ми ніхто не хочемо цього. Ми не просили нас освобождати. Діло домой. Холод пережили. Війна була. Перенесли. Ой.
Тут опять такая уже нельзя ли еще это уже перенести? Родина здесь. А куда ехать? Are you а вы не боитесь? А что бояться? Два раза не умирали. Some try to retain some sense of normalcy among the fear shelling. But not everyone in the region is unhappy about the Russian presence. Since 2014, Russian-backed separatists have been fighting the Ukrainian army in the Donbas, where many ethnic Russians and Russian speakers live. Россияне помогали Луганску, Донецку и областям в самые трудные времена. Слали гуманитарную помощь, людям помогали жить, восстанавливать какие-то там производства, налаживать жизнь к России, чем ко всем остальным вместе взятым. While fighting continues in the east, some Ukrainians are returning home to a bruised but lively Kyiv. Well, I'm really thankful to people aboard because they really helped us. Yes, but still I missed home and that's why I'm here. Very hard to admit, but you're getting used to, to this at some point. You know? In Bucha too, life is slowly returning to the streets. Поначалу шок, а потом понимаешь, что это уже наша реальность, и можно менять свою жизнь и жить там, где есть как есть. Жизнь идет, а жить надо. Какая бы она ни была, да, потому что это если ты это не примешь, ты садишь с ума. Это точно. However, life for millions of Ukrainians continues to be a struggle. More than 8 million people have been displaced within the country. More than 6 million refugees have fled across the borders. While millions of others continue to live under constant threat. And as Russian forces close in on towns and villages in the Donbass, the outcome of the war and the future of the country remain uncertain.